Luke here at the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel and I'm deep in the heart of the Alaskan mountains. I'm using snow dogs, snowshoes, and skis to cross a 22 mile pass through the mountains. I'm building my own survival shelters and camping in blizzards. Equipment's breaking down and my body's getting beat up. I'm not sure I can do this, but I am sure it's gonna be an interesting video. The snow dog's not very good at going over logs. Mm. Sled hitch popped up and hit me right in the teeth. Hmm. Ah, oh, man, I felt like I tipped a tooth on that. Gotta be careful of my money maker. Sometimes when an engine gets flipped over on its side, it messes up the oil and gas and can cause problems. So I'm just gonna kind of let this sit here, give it a few minutes and see if that doesn't fix the problem. All right, that seemed to do the trick. Check this out. This is one of the old road houses. During the gold rush days, this trail was used to take supplies from the coast into the interior of Alaska to the gold fields. And there was these road houses all along the trail and the mushers would use them to get supplies and a hot meal and shelter from the storm. Oh man. See the old shelves in here. And that old wood stove. I think I should probably get out of here. This roof is looking pretty saggy. I probably shouldn't have gone inside there. That little snow dog weighs just under 300 pounds and it has no reverse on it, so uh, can be a bit of a pain. Something just went off with that. My throttle cable just broke. So the throttle cable's right here and there's a little screw that holds it in place so that when you squeeze the handle, it pulls the throttle. That old screw's coming loose and I went and tightened it up, but if it falls out, I can't work my throttle anymore. My throttle keeps giving me trouble. I'm having to fix it every few minutes. I still got about 20 miles to go and uh, we're already off to a rough start.
Oh, that throttle jammed open. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. Well, it's gotten dark on me. I need to find a place to set up camp. I'm tired. I skipped lunch and I'm feeling it. I'm gonna have a little snack try to get my energy up. I gotta tell you guys, I am exhausted. Driving that snow dog is a workout and it got stuck so many times. I'm so tired, I don't even wanna bother with a fire. Ugh. Yeah, since I don't got a fire going, I'm gonna use an old dog mushing trick to cook my food. So I've got an old tuna fish can and a bottle of heat. This is a fuel additive we put into gas tanks to keep them from freezing up in the winter time. And it's mostly made out of isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol could be very dangerous. See how the flame is nearly invisible? If you spill isopropyl alcohol on yourself and light yourself on fire in the daytime, you won't even be able to see it. But it burns really clean and really hot. So it's great for cooking. Put some olive oil in the bottom of the pan. The advantage of burning alcohol is that it burns really clean. You can use it inside the tent like this and it doesn't stink the place up. It doesn't make your food taste funny. I'm done cooking my couscous and it looks like the flame just went out. About five, six ounces of heat lasted about 20 minutes. Let's cover that up, keep that warm. There we go. Got some fresh Alaskan scallops here. Got some butter and garlic. Cranberry couscous and scallops cooked in garlic butter. That's pretty good. Scallops have to be my favorite seafood. I got a sweetened passion fruit jelly that I'm gonna to use to make some herbal tea. Oh, it's just passion fruit puree. A little bit of honey added to it. Man, it is so good. Between my body heat and the stove, this little tent's pretty warm, but it's melted all the snow that's falling on it. And you can see there's this big pile of water right here. Uh, there's another one over here. I brought a couple caribou hides to sleep on. Caribou have these thick, hollow hairs. They're just absolutely amazing to sleep on. 
you know, air mattresses can pop when you sleep straight on the ground like this. So it's nice to have these hides instead. Fold them over just a little bit, get them extra thick. Let's test it out. Oh, oh yeah, this will work. I gotta tell you, I'm excited to get into bed. I am tired and beat up. Got these down camp slippers. Got a pair of down pants as well. Oh, I love these down pants and these down booties. They are so nice. Probably got too much stuff on right now, but uh, I'm cold, so I'm okay with that. It Oh, my socks are ever so slightly wet. Whenever you have a little bit of wetness in your socks, it'll make your feet cold. Took them off and I'm shoving them down the bottom of my bag so they can dry overnight. I'll tell you, it's a little bit lumpy and uh, I'm using a log as a pillow, but it's not bad. But I am so exhausted. I think I'm just gonna go to bed. Unless I get visited by wolves or something in the middle of the night, I'll see you guys in the morning. Oh. Oh, we got a problem. Roof just collapsed on me. Ah, there's so much ice and snow on the tarp, it broke the paracord. But uh, ran out there and fixed it. No, oh, well, I guess it was time to get up anyways. When the roof caves in on you, that's a signal it's time to get up and get out of bed. Yeah. Got my socks dried off. <clears throat> oh, everything's just wet in here. This tarp traps the heat pretty well and it melts the snow. And so the snow's turned to slush on the outside and that's leaking through. Then I've got condensation on the inside. So every time I touch the tarp, I get wet. <sighs> Got some powdered tang here. Oh, that feels nice. You see how the uh, fire's orange now instead of that invisible blue color? I threw a few wood chips in there last night and that ash mixed with the alcohol makes the flames orange so you can see them. Oh man, having that little alcohol stove under the tarp really warms it up in here. It's nice. All right. Let's get the snow dog fired up. Oh, that throttle switch is so messed up. The machines died on me twice while I was just sitting there idling. And the throttle's really sketchy right now, so. Man, I don't trust that machine. I think I'm gonna try to get back while I still can. Oh, my camera mount just broke. Everything is soaking wet, everything is breaking. I think it's time to get out while I still can. Would be encouraged. Oh, yeah. Turn on your heated <sighs> seat. Two days later. All right, it's been two days and I'm back at it. I'm in the same valley as I was with the snow dog, but I'm on a slightly different path. I don't want to have to cross all those rivers in my skis. <sighs> this sled I'm pulling behind me is called a polk and it makes winter trekking really convenient but it makes skiing really hard. Imagine having a 50 pound toddler pulling and pushing your belt while you're trying to balance on skis. 
Whoa, like that. See how there's this random clearing here with no trees? This is an avalanche zone. Avalanches routinely come down that mountain, destroy the trees. That's why there's very few spruce trees here. Woo Going downhill with that pulk is always sketchy. About halfway down, you get this violent shove from behind. I'm trying to take it real easy today. My knees are a bit junky. I tore or popped my left knee several weeks ago, and it's mostly recovered. And I smashed my right knee really hard on a snow machine accident. My knees feel good now, but that's going to change. There's the river I crossed with the snow dog. All right. I need to go ahead and get some water. This water's so clean, I could probably drink it straight, but you know, I got a filter, so why risk it? Gravity pulls the water through the filter, fills up my jug. When the filter's new, it does about a liter a minute. It's pretty quick. Once you're done, you gotta go ahead and drain the whole thing. If it turns to ice inside your filter, then the filter won't work. Woo, that's chilly. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, gotta take a little break and take care of my feet. Oh, it's already kind of starting to form it into a blister. I'll put some KT tape on this. Oh, I think it's time for a little lunch break. I got this venison summer sausage that a friend gave me on the island of Molokai. Oh, it smells lovely. Yeah, that's good. You gotta be really careful going down these trails. The moose like to walk on the ski trails and they'll kill you rather than get off it. I'm gonna be breaking trail from here on out. Navigating through these woods is really tricky. It's like, which way do I go? If I get on and off the path, it's okay, as long as I can keep that river in my left ear. Well, things are going much slower than anticipated, but I already made it several miles further than I did with the snow dog. Unfortunately, it's only about two hours before sunset and I'm behind schedule. I just lost the basket on my pole. I have no idea where that went. Without the basket, it's really hard to push off with your pole. Problem is, unless it's just sitting there on top of the snow, you're never gonna find it. That thing is gone. Gotta take a little break. Up to this point, it's been relatively flat. From here on out, I start to climb into the pass. Breaking trail and pulling a pulk uphill is rough. Try not to get my pulk in the water. Ooh. Oh, that's exactly what I did. I'm getting my stuff right in the water. Polk tipped over and dumped my coat right in the water. Bent my ski pole too. It's already 3.15 and it's starting to get dark. Yeah. Oh, the pulk's trying to pull me down in the river. I think I need to find a place to camp. And over there looks as good as any other place. good oh is there anything in the world that feels better than taking off ski boots
Oh my goodness. I think we're gonna get a lot of snow tonight. Curious to see how this tarp holds up. It is cold outside and it's getting colder by the moment. Time to make some food. All right, for dinner I'm having beef stew. I made it at home, vacuum sealed it, and then threw it in the freezer. All I have to do now is heat and eat. <laughs> I got some Ling Himui covered mango. All right, got some hot tang here. Man, the temperature's dropping like a rock and I'm not moving around. My coat's a little wet. Oh, I'm cold. Oh. Oh. Got all the boiling water in my thermos here. Just gonna go like that. Oh, I needed that so bad. Let's go ahead and eat some dinner. Got some sweet potatoes and carrots and beef chunks. Mmm. Oh, that tastes so good. It's warming my hands up too. I hit the spot, but I am cold and tired and I just want to get into bed. Oh, I need to level this snow out and make it nice and flat so I can sleep on it. Don't want to dig down too much because there's all these sticks and trees and stuff down there. Wish I had my caribou hides, but weight and space was such an issue. I had to bring this air mat instead. These X-Ped air mats are pretty good. Just gotta be so careful I don't poke a hole in it. So this right here is an emergency bivy. It's just a waterproof shell that slips over your sleeping bag. If you're in a storm, it can be a good emergency shelter. I'm gonna see if I can slip my air mat inside my emergency bivy. Well, that should protect it from popping. Here, we're gonna put that hot water bottle in there. Wow, we've got a lot of snow on the roof already. Oh yeah. I think I'm gonna have to knock that off before I go to bed, otherwise it's gonna collapse on me in the night. Got another glass of tang before I go to bed. I'm dehydrated. I pulled the liner out of my ski boots because it's a little bit sweaty. I'm gonna stick it in the bottom of my bag to keep it from freezing. And then when I put my boots on in the morning, it's not so cold. And it's time to get to bed. Ugh. Take my socks off so they dry in the bag and won't get my feet cold. All right guys, I think I'm gonna hit the sack. I am exhausted and I need to get up and get out as soon as I can. I need to use up every ounce of daylight tomorrow. All right, I'll see you then. It's 8.30 and about an hour before sunrise, maybe an hour and a half. I think I need to start getting ready. I need to take off as soon as it gets light. I like using flint and steel for lighting my stove. You can flick the sparks from afar instead of having to get your fingers nice and close to it. For breakfast, I've got a sausage and egg omelet. Just like the beef stew, I made this at home and vacuum sealed it. Now I just need to reheat it. My stove keeps going out. I think the head's gotten dirty. Ah, darn it. This thing is so weak. It's taking forever to boil. I'm just not getting pressure. That's full throttle right there. That's as much gas as I can give it. There's definitely something wrong. Oh, that's it. I don't think it's gonna give me anything more. I mean, that's warm enough. I got some cheese, sausage, eggs, peppers, onions. Oh, that was good. If you're gonna carry your own water with you anyways, there's really no advantage to having dehydrated meals versus prepared meals. 
and the frozen prepared meals just taste so much better. Oh, 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 that doesn't feel right. Oh, my right knee does not feel good. Oh guys, I am so falling apart. This is a sign that it's time for me to change. I've put a video out every Saturday morning for the last five years without missing a single week. And uh, I've done it when I'm sick, I've done it when I'm injured, and I work about 70 to 80 hours a week to get that video out. And I'm thinking it's time to start putting out a video every other week. And I know it's gonna disappoint a lot of people who've made this their Saturday morning routine, but it's time. Starting with this video, I am only gonna put out a video every other Saturday. But enough about that, let's talk about my current predicament. I have traveled about nine miles and I've got about three more miles till I get to the top of the pass. You know, I don't wanna get myself in trouble and I don't wanna hurt myself so bad that I need three weeks on the couch to recover. So I think the safe thing to do is to head back. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, there you go. That was a nice little shelter. Worked out really well. See, so check it out. On the bottom of my skis, I've got this synthetic fur. Back in the old days, they would use real seal skin, but of course now we use synthetic stuff. But the hairs all point backwards, so it allows you to scoot forward, but you don't slide back. And then if you want to go downhill skiing, you take the seal skins off, and they're just like a pair of downhill skis. Oh, uh, Polk is trying to pull me off the mountain. Every time that sled goes off the trail, it gets twisted around and I have to stop and fix it. I fix this Polk and I know it's gonna flip over on me just in like 20 more feet. The carabiner on my harness is all busted up. I don't think that carabiner is gonna last to the end of the trip. Sometimes I get so frustrated at my gear, I forget to stop and look at that view. Oh, my sled flipped over again. Whenever the trail's all squumpus like this, my polk ends up flipping over about every five, 10 minutes. Slows me down so much. Oh, didn't even make it five minutes. Oh, my harness just broke too. Gate finally tore off this carabiner. It's toast. There you go, kind of jerry-rigged it with a piece of rope. We'll see how that holds. We only have seven hours of daylight. And so far, the first 45 minutes, I've only done 0.2 miles. I've been working on this sled and dealing with this sled so much. I know the terrain gets a little better up ahead. So maybe we'll pick up some speed there. <sighs> Every time we get to a slanty part, the sled just goes whoop and rolls over. They'll probably do it right here too. Oh, if I had a longer polk, I could load it so that the center of gravity was lower and it wouldn't flip over as much. But you can see right here how this is all sloped off. Yeah, my sled's gonna tip over a bunch over there. Oh, is it tipped over already? Oh, my other carabiner just broke. <sighs> I got more rope, so I can deal with it. Come on. I think I need to change it up. Putting this much weight on my back makes me sink down further in the snow and it puts a lot more stress on my knees. I've got this spot I need to cross. <sighs> that worked a lot better than expected. And my sled's still upside down. <sighs> I repacked the sled and they got it a little bit more balanced. Seems to be helping. Getting out of the trees doesn't hurt either. When I get these long straight flat spots, everything works pretty well. Things are going a little bit better. Sled's not tipping over as much. 
Let's see, can I do it? Oh, yes. Oh, that's pretty. I think turning around was definitely the right move. I'm gonna be lucky if I get to my car before sunset. Every once in a while I go down a little hill like that and nothing goes wrong. And it's really nice. Well, I've been going for three hours without a break. I think I need to eat something. Man, the temperature's really dropping. My fingers are numb. I can hear the highway. I'm getting close to the car. Now, I didn't achieve the goal I was hoping for, but I'm not gonna leave empty-handed. Well, my wife asked me to bring home a Christmas tree. My wife has very particular tastes in Christmas trees. She likes them tall, skinny, and quirky. She, she has a type. <laughs> that one's looking promising. Not as big as I was expecting, but that's not a bad one. Watch our heads up. We're a little short on Christmas ornaments, so we're gonna use the boys' action figures. There we go, one Star Wars Christmas ornament. There we go, there's General Grievous. This video didn't go quite the way I expected, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanna see more videos from the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel, make sure to click subscribe and activate your notifications so you'll get notified when we put out our next video. All right guys, I'll see you in two weeks. If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning. And hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.